Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting VTM brought to you by 3D Buzz. This time around, we're going to be taking a look at Kadara's Motion Builder, formerly known as Filmbox. Before we begin, I'd like to take a second and thank Kadara for sponsoring this VTM and the 3D Buzz website. You can take a look at all of the impressive products they have to offer by visiting their website at www.kadara.com. Now, let's take a second for some introductions. First of all, my name is Jason Busby, also known to a lot of you guys out there simply as Buzz. And I will be one of your hosts tonight, walking you through this incredible application. And joining me in the studio, we've got Mr. Zach. How are we doing tonight, Zach? Doing great, Buzz. How are you? You know, not bad at all. So looking forward to this little uh, Motion Builder VTM? Oh, yeah, this has been awesome just learning this. This is good stuff, absolutely. So, you know, the first thing that people are probably wondering is, what exactly is Motion Builder? Well, Motion Builder is a real-time 3D animation program. Now, what we mean by real-time is that you can actually take your characters, bring them into Motion Builder, and you can animate them, you can set up lighting, you can set up all your rigging and all that, and you can see all of the feedback immediately in the viewer. You won't have to wait for your viewer to update like you do in certain packages like Maya or Max, and you also don't have to wait for a long render time to get everything out. Okay, so uh, basically what he's saying is like you're working inside of Maya, right? And you're trying to animate a walk cycle, and you hit play, and you go to watch your feedback, and your feedback is slow, slow, slow. So you next, you know, next thing you got to do, you got to do a play blast, and then you got to watch your playback, and that takes time. And you know, you can take your models from inside of Maya and other packages, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. And you can bring them into Motion Builder, and then do your animation inside of Motion Builder, and your feedback is going to be real time. In other words, when you hit play. That's it. I mean, that's the real deal. And then you can plot that animation back out. You can take it back over to the application that you used to generate your model to begin with, and then continue on with texturing, lighting, rendering, etc. Or, of course, you could stay inside of Motion Builder as well and do texturing, work with shaders, materials, and... Um, get a little bit of rendering action going on from there. Exactly, and it might be a good idea to go ahead and bring up all of the packages that K that Kadar's Motion Builder is compatible with, yeah, not just Maya and Max. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, here's, here's a few of them, a few of the common ones. We've got 3DS Max, we've got Maya, we've got Lightwave, Cinema 4, and we also have Electric Images uh, Universe 4. So there's a few of them. You can find out more about what's supported by going over to Kadara.com and reading about it there. Now, right now, what we're looking at is the Motion Builder interface, and there's several different ways that the UI can be laid out, and we'll be taking a look at this more a little bit later on. But right now, I've got one of the sample scenes loaded up, and let me go ahead and say this now because this is going to kind of haunt us quite a bit throughout this VTM and other VTMs that are going to occur in the future, and that is that even though Motion Builder is real-time, and on our end, we get to see it real-time, you guys, unfortunately, will not get to see it real-time just because of, you know, the limitations with uh, screen capturing software, et cetera, et cetera. Video compression. You guys are going to be looking at about... I don't know, about 10 frames per second. Well, we're going to be watching it at anywhere from 30 frames per second to, I don't know, this scene here with Max is out somewhere around 75 to 80 frames per second. So we'll get to see it nice and fluently. Let me go ahead and give you a, a quick example. I'll come down here to my transport controls, and I'll go ahead and hit play. And you guys that are now watching this VTM, you're going to see that this is going to appear choppy. So let's watch this really cool fight scene. Now, to you it looks choppy, but to us, guess what? That looks nice and smooth. It looks like these guys are really trying to take each other out. Pretty cool, eh? That's awesome. Now, this is just one example. What I wanted to do was just go ahead and have something opened up that shows some character animation because, in the end, that is what Motion Builder is really all about, real-time character animation, even though you're not just limited to character animation. And I've got some other things that I'm about to open up, some sample files, and we'll basically end this off by pulling up a, an actual character from Maya that in this very VTM a little bit later on, we're going to take a look at boning, skinning, and then bringing the character over into Motion Builder and how we can actually characterize it and get it ready to go for some animation. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things that Motion Builder is able to do. So we have see these 3D characters right here. Check this out. Let's go ahead and come up here and Let's open this up. Now, this is going to take just a second to go ahead and bring this in, so just kind of pause. And Zach, is there anything great we can talk about this evening? Uh, not really. Let's see here. It, it's almost done. We probably shouldn't get into a long, deep, dark conversation because by the time we get done with it, this will have already loaded up and we'll have wasted all this time. Yeah, that's a, all right. So now we're at 75%. We'll talk about the percentages. And now we're pretty much done. Check that out, Zach. What do you think? 
Wow. It yeah. looks it looks like we pretty much got a 2D drawing here in front of us. Looks like we've inked it out, right? Yeah. You ready for this? Well, first of all, obviously, I can come down here and I can hit play. And we're still going to get real-time feedback. I mean, it's yeah. real-time when and I Once again, this is real-time to us and about 10 frames a second to you guys. But, oh, now, more, more kung fu fighting. Zach is very happy. Now, of course, now to really show about, you know, just how fast this is, I can come down here and even just jitter. With, you know, unfortunately, they won't even be able to see the jitter on the playback with their with the VTM itself. But I can jitter down here, my time slider, and you get it's so fast that you can actually feel what you're doing with your wrist up here in your viewer. And those of you who might have tried that, like in Maya or Max, you know, you set up a pretty complicated animation. <laughs> with the skinning and everything else. Yeah, and then you grab your time slider and just shake it back and forth and watch what your 3D package <laughs> does to you. Guess what? The time slider doesn't go back and forth. No. <laughs> you get an hourglass. I love it. And that's, you know, that's just one of the things that makes Motion Builder just absolutely incredible for doing animation. Now, take a look at this. Of course, we're looking at this right now in a drawing-type style, but if I come in here... Is that not cool or what? I'm actually rotating around these guys. I can come in here and just pan them around if I want to. I can go ahead and zoom out or zoom in. So let's just kind of come over here. And now, I you mean, know, any 3D package can uh, move the camera around while you're standing still, but why don't we show them uh, but some you know, the, oh, But, you know, I was just going to say, sure, yeah, you can, but, you know, just the simple fact that, it looks like it's been drawn with a pen. I know, I know. In the viewer, I mean, in the viewport. For I'm going to say viewport a lot here, guys, just because our general audience out there is used to hearing the term viewport from other applications that we do VTMs on. But and I mean, we're used to saying it. And so, I mean, isn't that just absolutely? That's just that's just it's, that's beautiful. That's just so cool. So uh, let's go ahead and come down here and hit play. And Zach was probably looking at something like we can actually come in here and rotate this around mm -hmm. while we maintain real time. Uh, feedback as it's playing. Of course, that's a little disorientating there, but that's pretty cool. All wow. right, so yeah. You know, I can fight like that. Can you really? Oh yeah. You know what? We need we need a motion capture rig ourselves. Oh yeah. It would look pretty pathetic though. It would be looking like you would. Never mind. I won't even say. Let I it mean, go. Just, just let it go. I'm saying on your end, it's gonna it'll look pretty good because I believe that you can do some pretty cool moves. But now I know what kind of moves I can do. I can sit at a computer and I can type. And I just don't know how well that's going to translate into fighting material. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me script it. <laughs> I'll take care of it. All right, so anyways. Until I get my fingers on the home row. So, so we've, we've taken a look at just, you know, real quickly talking about the ability for this uh, – character animation stuff and real-time feedback. But, you know, we're not limited to just that. You know, let's go ahead and take a look at some material-type things. Again, using just some of the samples that they have, let's go ahead and come down here and we'll open up this cool little x-ray thing. This is pretty nifty here. Oh, this is awesome. So here we go loading again. Yes. So uh, so let's just talk about this motion capture studio we're going to be building. Right, what do you think? Out back? Uh, I don't know. Need uh, a little what? bit more? What? Uh, hang on. Here we go. Check we'll this out, guys. Right. Pretty neat, eh? Very nice. Very you nice. Know, but when you first pull this up, it's like so. Until you start to rotate around. Oh, wow. Tumble your view. Then you're like, wait a minute. Now, that that's not fair. What's going on here? If I come in here, let's select this little x-ray thing right here and... Let's move this around and, huh, huh, is that not cool or what? Do we have some animation on them? Well, absolutely. Let's go ahead and move this over. Is that not just too cool? I mean, there's just some really neat things that we can do with here. And you start working with shaders and, and excuse me, lights and materials. And if we come down here right now, let's say to shaders and come down here to light a shader number two and start adjusting some of our transparency that we can control this. Of course, all real time. I mean, there is no wait for it to render or wait for the effect to occur. Exactly. I mean, it's just boom right there. Uh, let's go ahead and switch up here. This is pretty neat, too, if I just want to go ahead and kind of move over here to the side. Watch this transparency. Let's take the poor guy's body and zoom. Oh, pretty neat. So we're cool. actually cutting through that geometry yeah. to see this. Pretty neat stuff. So um, so that's pretty cool. So you can see that we can do some neat effects type things when working with shaders. But you know what? We've got other stuff that we can do that's also pretty cool. Motion Builder focuses quite a bit. Let's see. Is it over here? Looking, looking, looking. We're going to have to actually go into open on this one here. So let's see. There we go. And let's go ahead and open this up now. We won't save that. Motion Builder also works fantastic with motion capture. And we're not talking about just motion capture rigs that may cost anywhere upwards of $100,000 or more. We're talking about you can simply take your keyboard or your mouse and rig them up with Motion Builder as input devices for controlling stuff. Is that not cool? That is awesome. And, um, and you know what? It's even more awesome than that. We can also rig up your microphone, if you will, and use that 
for actually controlling a character talking on the screen. So you can talk into your mic. And my character will actually speak you the words got that it. I'm saying. That you is got so it. awesome. In fact, we will be taking a look in the next VTM or two. We'll actually take a look at how we could set that up. Killer. So uh, let's go and take a look at what this guy does. Right now, if I want, I can just hit the one key on my keyboard and check this out. As I move my mouse left and right, let's go ahead and turn over to the right here. Now, as I push my mouse forward, we're picking up some speed. So I'm doing a little bit of motion capture here. And now I can go ahead and start pulling my mouse down. You'll notice we're slowing down, and now I can pull it back, and we're going in reverse. That is just too cool. I mean, that, that is ob that's absolutely cool. So uh, go ahead and press the one key again, and bloop, it's now stopped. Okay? It's like we just turned our gas off, basically. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at another one real quick. I'm just getting too carried away with all these samples. But, I mean, they're just so cool. Uh, let's go ahead and come down here. and Yeah, I noticed you could even use a joystick as a motion capture absolutely, device. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's go ahead and open up this one here. I got one of those big old 40 button flight sticks, you know, they can get some serious motion. Check this out. Oh, wow. Little. Video games. Now, you know, You're I am actually playing that right now. That, yes, I that am. That is not a keyframed animation. Well, there's, um, there's some interesting things set up here to actually pull this off. And as we see, I completely stink while talking and trying to play an old game of Space Invaders, if you will. But um, let's take yeah, a look at this. Yeah, you really do suck. You yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I was to, uh, let's see, man, let's see. If I come in here, and I can actually select, look at that. Oh, wow. Selecting objects. Wow, and you were actually selecting the sphere on that thing. Check that out. Huh? huh? Oh, no, that's disorienting. I mean, I mean this is actually. Uh, it is an actual 3D scene. This is not a little game that they've put in here. Now, there's quite a bit going on in this to actually make it all work. And we'll be taking a look at some of the connections and relationships to do stuff like this a little bit later on. But I just wanted to, to kind of give you a little bit of an idea. So let's go ahead and come in here and open up one more thing real quick. And this is kind of what we're going to be focusing on in this specific VTM. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now, the skidding job on this is nothing fantastic. It was something I threw together in five minutes or so. And I'll be throwing it again uh, together a little bit later on in this VTM. Well, we're actually going to be working over in Maya for a few minutes. Now, this takes just a second to actually pull in, so we've got to kind of hang tight for just a second. But this is a character that was modeled back over in Maya. The bones were, or joints, if you will, for in Maya were laid out inside of Maya. The character was smooth-skinned in Maya. And now we've brought him into Motion Builder. And at this point, if I was to come in here and select any of the joints, there we go, and we'll go ahead and rotate. You can see that I can rotate. We've already got some basic FK going on. Exactly. But now, let's say that I want to put a rig on this guy. I'm going to go ahead and hit U to undo. I want to put a control rig so that I can use a combination of FK and IK. Yeah, what exactly do you mean by a control rig? Well, we're going to actually talk a little bit more about control rigs a little bit later on. But I, uh, just real quickly, I'll say this. You know, when you're working over in Maya or 3ds Max and you put in your IK, it's not you know it's not just as simple as that. If you're going to set up a very intuitive to control character for animation, I got you. Okay, so you'll go in there and you'll use dummies or you'll use locators and you'll rig them up through constraints and all. You'll set up custom attributes and sliders just to make it easy for an animator to actually animate the character. It takes a lot of time to set that up. So shall I show you how easy it is to do inside of Motion Builder? Let's see it. All right, now you might want to prepare yourself because this may. This may make your heart stop. Do we have enough time to hook all this up? Well, let's see. Let's find out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to my layout, and I'm going to switch it over to editing. This is kind of the way I prefer to work. When uh, Let's see. It's kind of pausing on us. There we go. This is the way I kind of prefer to work right here when doing certain things. We'll talk more about different ways of working inside of Motion Builder a little bit later on. But uh, let's go ahead and come over here to our asset browser, and I'm going to switch over the way I see this. And let's come down here to templates and characters. And I'm just going to take this thing called a character and simply click and drag it up over my guy, let go, and tell it to characterize. Ah, uh, drag and drop systems. That's very nice. I like well, guess that. guess what? That's what Motion Builder is. It's all drag and drop, everything. Sweet. So now let's go ahead and take this. I'm going to come over here and expand characters. Double click on character down here. Come over here to character definition. And he's already been characterized, and a control rig has already been created. So wow. all, all I need to do, just to prove this, I'm going to change his input type right now to character input. Now, let me say this real quick. This is an introduction. So all these things I'm clicking on and doing, by no way am I expecting you at the moment to 
be memorizing the things I'm doing and be able to reproduce this. We're going to break everything down throughout several VTMs for you guys. In fact, by the end of this VTM, you're going to be able to do all of this stuff just with no problem at all. But, you know, I've now got this guy set to a control rig input. I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Look at all the little pretty colors we get up there. We'll talk about some of those things a little bit later on. Very let's go cool. ahead and come over here to our character controls dialog, and let's select one of these guys. And I'll go ahead and hit T. Now watch this. Huh? We wow. Moving. Cool. Hello. Hi, so it, it stuck some simple IK in there. Yeah, well, simple or not so simple. Oh, wow. How's that? That rocks. We have, uh, we have some very unique things that we can do with this control rig with our character. And we'll be talking about those things a little bit later on and how you can actually control what it does and doesn't do, which is pretty neat. But to set up a rig like this inside of Maya or Max would take a significant amount of time. I mean, there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of control going on oh, right wow. here. Check him out. Now, very cool, huh? Now, of course, this is all real time. Uh, again, our viewers are not going to be able to see this because yeah. of the, the 10 frames per second playback. But it is definitely very, well, very cool. They can see cool. it if they get their hands on a copy of Motion Builder. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and come up here, and let's just switch over. While we could drag this around for moving it, I'm just going to switch over to, uh, let's see, we'll grab Rotate. And he'll just kind of look around, see what's going on up there. How's it going? All right. Oh, that is very nice. So, you know, we've just kind of taken a look so far at just what Motion Builder is. Its primary focus is real-time animation and character animations what it's all about okay and we've talked a little bit about its capabilities with motion capture really shines in that department and we of course have the ability to put lights in the scene material shaders textures there's a ton of different things audio uh, a lot of things we can do with animation bring all these things together and output them into files or take that data back over into other applications and utilize it there as well we, so we've seen some really good examples of the really high-tech uh, uh, the, the relations you can make in between systems. Absolutely, with a little Space Invaders type game yeah. thing there as well. So I think this is going to serve as a pretty good introduction to Motion Builder. And then from here, let's go ahead and start breaking it down and start getting into all the pieces. And by the end of this VTM, I believe our viewers are going to have a pretty good understanding of what this is all about. I'm looking forward to it. All right, so thanks, guys.